Hello, fellow scientists. This is Miss Pavlicek. I'm here at the Burlington Science Center, and I'd like to welcome you to Wild Wednesdays. Wild Wednesdays will happen on most Wednesdays throughout the school year here at the Science Center. We'll have some exciting live animal programs with me, Ms. Pavlicek. We'll have Mr. Musselman coming to do some exciting earth and um, space science investigations. And we'll also have some guest scientists um, once in a while. Um, before I get started, I just wanted to talk to you a little bit um, about how much I miss seeing you in person um, this year, but I'm so happy to bring this exciting program to you. And one of the things I like to stress, especially during these times, is kindness. And kindness to each other and human beings, but also kindness to all living things or creatures, no matter how big or how small. And talking about small creatures today, we are going to be introduced to a friend of mine called the leopard gecko. And the leopard gecko's name is Groot, and he's about 10 to 15 years old. But before we meet Groot, I want to talk to you a little bit about what kind of animal geckos are and what sets them apart different from other animals. And then we'll dive into meeting Groot. We're going to look at some of Groot's parts, the pieces that he has, and we'll learn about the function or the jobs that those parts do. Then at the end, I'll talk a little bit about having leopard geckos as a pet in your own home, and then we'll say goodbye for today and move on till next week. So to get started, geckos belong to a group of animals called... What kind of animal is a gecko? What do you think? Some of you might say lizards. That's right. A gecko is a type of lizard. And here on the board, I have a, some pictures of all different types of lizards. There are iguanas and monitors. Um, geckos are characteristically a smaller type of lizard. But my next question, because scientists love to ask questions, is, what kind of animal is a lizard? And what are the features or the characteristics that set lizards aside from other animals? Well, you might notice this word right over my shoulder. That's right. Lizards belong to a group of animals we call reptiles. And behind these little cards are those characteristics or those clues that tell you about the lizard. So we're going to peel them off and we'll learn a little bit about it. So the first characteristic is oh, lizards or reptiles all have what's called the backbone. Now you all have a backbone. I want you to bend over and feel the little bumps going up and down your back here. Each one of those little bumps going to use a model. This is not a real backbone, but it is a model. Scientists love to use models. This is a backbone. And each of these little bones is called your vertebra. And in between, there are little discs that are squishy that help you to bend and move. And these little yellow things are nerve endings that help your body to feel. And these little bones, each of these little bumps here that stick out is what you feel when you bend over. So all reptiles have a backbone. In fact, I have with me a lizard skeleton and if I get close, hopefully you can observe the lizard's backbone. You can see the backbone is down the center, and it has little ribs. You have some legs and toes, and also a very long tail. And then the head of our skeleton is always called a skull. Think, what do you notice about this skeleton? It's pretty neat. All right, so let's move on to our next characteristic. And our next characteristic is all reptiles are cold blooded. Well, that must mean that inside their body, their blood is really cold. Nope, 
even though it sounds like it because it says cold and blood, the word cold blooded has to do with their body and the body's temperature. So here I have my thermometer and right here on this little label, it says body temperature. How many of you guys have ever gone to the doctors or at home, you're not feeling well, and your parents take your temperature? That's because your body temperature should be somewhere on this scale here um, around this area here. Now, if your body temperature goes too high, it means you're sick and have a fever, and the same if you're too low. Now, with reptiles, being cold-blooded means that when the environment is warm, it means their body temperature gets warm. But if the environment gets cold, their body temperature gets cold as well. So their body temperature changes with the temperature of their environment or where they live. And we'll talk about that a little bit more when we look at Groot the Gecko's habitat. All right, next. Our next characteristic is... <gasps> All reptiles, including group, breathe with lungs. Take a deep breath in and out. I want you to put your hands on your chest right here. Take another deep breath in and out. And you'll feel those lungs expanding and contracting as we breathe. The next characteristic is reptiles lay leathery eggs. They usually dig holes in the ground and they bury them in order to incubate and then they hatch. The next characteristic is, ooh, dry, scaly skin. Sounds like Miss P in the winter time. Oh, but that dry, scaly skin, like my model fake lizard here, those scales help protect the reptile. And what's neat about their scales is Sometimes they're made of the same stuff that our fingernails are. So feel your fingernail, feel your hair. They're made of that same stuff. It's called keratin. So some of the reptiles have keratin as part of that. And their last characteristic is they have babies that look like their parents. So again, let's grab this model of this lizard. If this was an adult lizard and it had its baby, its baby would look very similar to its parent might be a little bit of a different color, but its body shape and everything that's about its body is the same. It doesn't change or go through what's called metamorphosis. That's a long word. Can you say that? Metamorphosis. Those are things like frogs and toads. They change like butterflies change as they grow. Awesome. So here we have our characteristics. Backbone, cold-blooded, their body temperature goes up and down. <gasps> They breathe with lungs. They lay leathery eggs, just kind of like a leather jacket. They're tough, but they don't break. Uh, dry, scaly skin, and their babies look like their parents. Well, without further ado, I think it's time to meet our reptile lizard friend named Groot the Leopard Gecko. So I'm just gonna, oh, I think Groot just came out here to say hello. Hello, Groot. Awesome. So here we have Groot the leopard gecko. Groot came to us from a reptile organization called Rainforest Reptile Shows. They have a nonprofit called RRS Oasis. You can look them up on Facebook or on their computer and they provide a home for abandoned or injured or abused animals. And Groot lived there. Now the word Groot, his name, came from a famous movie called Gardens of the Galaxy. And there's a little growing tree in that movie named Groot. And we thought it was a good fit for our gecko. And Groot's just hanging out here. Now geckos can live an average of 10 to 15 years. They tend to live a little longer in captivity. But what we want to learn right now about Groot the gecko is the body, the parts that Groot has, and the function or the job that they do. And you might be able to observe Groot right now climbing and walking using some of his body parts to do what they do. 
Can you do that again? Very cute. We'll turn her around, him around, show him this side. Now, some of you might say, is Groot a boy or a girl? Um, geckos, leopard geckos, you can tell if they're boys or girls by looking under their tail here. And if they have a little tiny row of pores, it means they're either a boy or a girl. And if they're missing those pores, it means they're either a boy or a girl. Now, the other thing you'll notice is, why do you think Groot is called a leopard gecko? Any ideas? Hmm, I bet you can tell. I'm going to put um, Groot down for just a second. I have a little carrier here that I'm going to put him in. And then I'm going to turn my computer. Oh, Groot's trying to get away. Um, I'm going to turn my computer around. I'll give you a hint, okay? So let me just pick this up for a second. I'm going to show you on our science center wall. <gasps> Can you see that? That's right. You're going to notice that leopard up there on the wall. And if you look at that leopard, what is the same? That is the same about our Groot, our lizard, or our gecko. Well, I hope, of course, you said that Groot has spots just like our leopard. And in fact, that's why they call them leopard geckos, because they have spots just like a leopard. Now, where do you find geckos living before we dive into those parts? Well, they live in certain habitats like the desert, or they love to hide in the grasslands inside the grass here. And they will dig or even steal from other animals a hole in the ground that we call a burrow. And especially in the desert, they'll go way underground when they need to cool off or come up and sit on that sand to get the heat or the warmth that they need. Now, I did bring a little map with me here because some of you might say, could we see Groot the Gecko living outside here in Burlington? Unfortunately, no. But I'm going to take my little sticker here. And if we look, we have our continents of the world. We have North America where we live, South America, Europe, Africa, Asia, Australia, and oops, don't forget about Antarctica. And if we had to stick a circle on this map, where do you think leopard geckos come from? Any guesses? Go ahead and guess. Go ahead and guess. Oh, someone's calling in the answer right now. And we have right here. So when we look at this map, leopard geckos are native or come from Asia, specifically countries called Afghanistan, India, Iraq, and Iran. So some of you might um, have family members or even been born or come from these countries, and you can see leopard geckos in the wild. Very cool. All right, so let's learn a little bit more about Groot's parts. Now, we talked a little bit about Groot's skin, right? We talked about it being spotted and um, just like our leopard. So think to yourself, why do you think Groot has this spotted skin? Why do you think it is the color that it is? Go ahead and take a second or two. Why do you think? Is it just to make him pretty? Could be, some animals have pretty colored skin to help be attracting to mates. But the real reason is for protection or what we call whoop, camouflage. Can you guys say that word for me? Camouflage. Camouflage is when an animal's pattern or color helps it blend in or disappear. So just like with the grasses or the sand, or if I take Groot and put Groot on top of this rock or this house, you can see how from far away, you wouldn't be able to if he was still, he blends in or disappears with the rock that he's sitting on. So very up, look, up. Someone's trying to go inside the rock, so cute. Oh, so cute, Groot. All right, so that's really neat. Now, the other neat thing about gecko skin is as they grow, their skin starts to kind of change color, and it turns this white. 
And as it grows, it gets kind of tight and kind of too tight and small. So what they do is every now and then, a gecko will molt or shed their skin. And they turn a white color called opaque. And then after a few days, that skin dries. Get ready for this. How many of you just had lunch? Well, the leopard gecko eats its skin after it sheds to get important vitamins and nutrients. I don't know about you, but after a sunburn, are you hungry to eat your skin? No, but that's what makes animals so different and interesting. So pretty cool as far as Groot and his skin and what those help him with. Now next, I'm gonna to try to get in very close. We talked a little bit about, oh, can you stay still? About Groot breathing with lungs. And you're gonna notice that Groot's mouth is moving up and down, the chin here underneath. But right here on Groot's nose are two tiny little holes called nostrils. And those nostrils are what it's allowing the air to come into the body and go down into his lungs. So really, really neat um, that he uses those nostrils to get air to breathe with his lungs. Hold on one second. I'm just going to shut that phone off. Thank you. We're just so popular here at the Science Center. Everybody wants to call us and science and law. But um, so really neat that Groot has those nostrils. And if you look at your nostrils and you close your mouth, take a deep breath in. Your nostrils do that same function. They pull that air in down into your lungs to breathe as well. Um, all right. So the next thing we're going to talk about is Groot's eyes. I want you to take a minute or a little few seconds to look at Groot's eyes. Might be a little hard to see on live stream because sometimes it's not as crisp and clear, but they have very big eyes. And in the center of their eye is a slit. It's like a line that goes up and down. And I'm sure you guys already know that we use our eyes to see. But what's really neat about leopard geckos is they are one of the few lizards or geckos that have true eyelids. And what that means is they can close them, they can blink them, and a lot of geckos even use their tongues to clean their eyes when they don't have eyelids like our gecko here. And then of course, he uses them to blink and then to sleep. And one of the neat things about our leopard gecko here he is different from us. You guys all went to bed last night. You know, the sun was going down. Oh, you had a great day at school or at home. And then, oh, we get tired. And somewhere in the evening, we lay down and we rest our heads. And you want to take a nap together? Come on. We rest at night and then... Now the sun is up and it's daytime and we're walking around having a good time. What you don't know is I had to wake up Groot the gecko for us to see today. And that's because he's the opposite of us. He is active at night and sleeps during the day. And that's because in the desert, that sun is so hot, so hot that it's harder for him to be outside. It doesn't mean he can't, but he's mostly active at night. Do you know what we call an animal that's only active at night? Go ahead, say it out loud. Groot is nocturnal, nocturnal. So again, Groot, thank you for not being cranky and being such a great friend today and visiting us. All right, well, the next thing that's really hard to see, and because Groot's such a friendly gecko, we can't see them, but inside Groot's mouth, are tiny, tiny little teeth. And these teeth are razor, razor sharp. They're so small, you can't really see them unless you have the mouth open. Uh, oh, maybe they'll open his mouth again. But what do you think that main purpose or function for his teeth are? You got it. To eat and catch his prey or his food. 
Now, we're going to go through, I have some models here of some of the things that Groot might eat. Now, if you come out at night, that means your food comes out at night. So let's think of the desert and the grassland. What kind of other creatures would be out at night in the desert, in the cool or the grassland? Things that might crawl around, skitter around, things I'm sure your parents love. Remember, kindness to all creatures. <gasps> they love a variety of different bugs and insects. Now, not only just insects, they'll eat, of course, insects like crickets and things like cockroaches, but they'll also catch centipedes. Pretty cool. This is a big one. I don't think Groot could eat this, too big. Or Groot's favorite meal might be something like a scorpion. Whoa, pretty impressive. Now, there's a name for what we call animals that eat things like insects and centipedes and scorpions. Those types of animals don't have backbones and all of those animals are considered in a group of animals that only eat meat. Do you know what an animal is that only eats meat? We call it a carnivore. Go ahead and say that, carnivore. Carne or carny comes from the word meat. Now, if you're an animal that only eats plants, you are called an herbivore with an H, herbivore. And then there's another name for animals that eat both. And that's called omnivore. Can you say that? Omnivore. And omni means many. So we have our carnivore loving. Hey, would you guys like to see Groot eat some food? Awesome. I just happened. Yes, I'm sure your parents are saying no, no, no. <laughs> I brought with me some little worms today. Um, they're in a dish, and I'm hoping Groot is hungry. Groot's pretty friendly, so I'm going to put them in my hand here, and we're going to see if Groot would like to eat some mealworms. Let's see here. What do you think, Groot? Are you hungry? Are they not wiggling enough? Oh, do you notice what Groot is using right now? Groot is using his tongue. Oh, there he goes. Awesome. So Groot is using that tongue to help catch his food. And these mealworms aren't moving too much. Let me try a few others right here. Let's see. You want that? Go ahead, Groot. Let me put him on this side. It might be a little easier. You want some of that? Look, it's wiggling. Oh, no. What do you think? Oh. Oh, we got it. So they use that tongue to taste the air to tell where their food is. It's kind of like how a snake tastes around. It's like a sensing organ. Do it again. Oh, only two. I'm sure most geckos don't eat hanging in the air like this, but we're trying to do our best here for streaming purposes. But anyway, that was a great, great um, show of how Groot uses the tongue and the teeth to catch his food. Awesome. All right, so I'm going to put Groot down for just one second. Um, the next thing I want to show you, the next part, when we were observing our skeleton, I brought it really close. And I want you to look on the side of the head. Let's see here. And what you might notice is right behind the eye sockets or holes, those are the big ones in the front, you're going to see another smaller hole behind the eye. I want you to think, what would that smaller hole be right behind the eye? Hmm. I don't know. Let's take a look at Groot and see if he has that. 
<gasps> he does. It's actually right above my finger. Can you see that round hole? It might look like a spot, but this bigger circle, right, that I'm moving is actually a hole. And the hole goes right through one side of his head and out the other. So what part is that? You're right, it's his ears. Now Groot doesn't have lobes like we do, right? Our lobes help collect vibrations in the air. Instead, Groot just has a hole that the vibrations go into. And a lot of reptiles can feel the vibrations through their jawbone in their mouth here. And the vibrations travel up their jaw into that hole and it allows them to hear. So that's pretty neat. Now, the next part we're gonna talk to about are Groot's feet and toes. Now, if you think of other geckos, what's some of the neatest thing when you think of about geckos and their feet? Any guesses? When you look at the bottom of certain geckos' feet, they will have little sticky pads or little circles and they can climb up, climb up the wall. Well, leopard geckos do not have sticky toes. They're one of the few types of lizards that do not. Um, so instead of sticky toes, they have those little teeny, 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 they're so teeny, they're hard to see. He's got little teeny claws. And those do help when climbing over those rocks or plants or anything else outside in his habitat or in his environment. Now, the last part I wanna talk about is the most interesting part of the gecko, their tail. I wonder what is the function or the job that the gecko's tail does? Take a few seconds, what do you think? Well, number one, when you're climbing up over something, that tail helps give him balance because his body is so long in the front, this helps balance the back to make him equal when he's climbing or moving over things. The second thing it can do is distract a predator. And a predator is something that comes to try to eat group. And there's lots of different predators. Um, some of the predators uh, might be other reptiles, or they say even fox or um, owls or things that live in the desert or the grasslands will eat them. But the number one thing that this tail does is protects Groot. Geckos, leopard geckos, have what's called a detachable tail. A detachable tail means it comes off. What happens is, right at the bottom of the, t the bone here, um, not at the bottom of the tail, but right at the, uh, the top of the tail or the bottom of his body is what's called a fracture plane. Can you say that? Have any of you ever had a fracture before? What does fracture mean? That's right, fracture means to break or snap. Sorry if you've had that happen before. But for this guy, what he does is he shakes his tail. Go ahead, shake your tail, shake your, they say with birds, take your, shake your tail feather, shake your tail feather. He shakes his tail and it distracts the predator and the predator comes in closer. Let's use our model here. And the predator comes in closer and comes in closer. And right before it grabs the gecko, guess what happens? <gasps> the tail breaks off, it snaps, it starts flopping around like a dead fish. And that is so attracted to the predator and it grabs the tail and starts eating the tail and goes nuts. And guess what Groot does? The rest of him scurries away and is safe to live another day. Wow, what a special part to have to help you get away from predators. Now, when that does happen, it does bleed a little bit, but the blood vessels close off where the blood comes from, and within a few days it heals, and the tail will even grow back. Not as long and as pretty as before, but it does help him heal and helps him to survive, and that's the, the big important thing. 
So boys and girls, parents and families, now we've learned a little bit about our leopard gecko Groot from head to tail. Some of you might be saying like, wow, Groot is so special and he's so neat. I wonder if he would make a good pet for us. What I usually tell everyone about pets is number one, they are a huge responsibility. They take time, they take money, and they do take care. But you have to choose what's best for you and your family. One of the things to first consider too is how long that animal lives. Because here at the Science Center, we get a lot of phone calls and emails of people who think they want pets, or they think they do and they want it, and mom and dad, please. But then they get the pet and a few months go by and they kind of don't want to take care of it anymore and they call me. And I can't take every animal and that animal needs to have a home for the rest of its life. So really think about having a pet and that responsibility. And for those students and parents who are interested, we do what's called foster a pet. So during school vacation weeks and the summer, we foster our animals out to families in Burlington. I usually send emails or an announcement out to your teachers. And just like I sent this announcement out in Seesaw, I'll be sending those announcements out this year. Now, if you're considering a pet on your own time and it's not during a vacation and I have the animal here at the center and you want to try it for a week, I have no problem either. You can reach me on the email that I left on the flyer for this program. But what I'm going to do now is show you what a setup would be and describe the care for a leopard gecko as a pet. So I am going to put Groot back in his cage. So we'll say goodbye to him again later, but I'm going to put him down just so I can talk. Put him back in here. And I'm going to wheel his cage up. Hopefully the cords stretch okay. We're going to move it a little closer, and then I will bend my screen down. Here we go. So we have our leopard gecko's tank. A 10 to 20 gallon tank is recommended for a leopard gecko. They do not need a lot of tall or climbing space, but they do need a decent space on the floor. On the bottom of my tank, I recommend paper towels or newspaper. And you can also buy a really fine sand, but some sand, the particles is so big that if he accidentally eats it, or grabs a cricket or something that he's eating, he might get it in his stomach and it might make him sick. So I recommend the newspaper or the paper towels. Psst, look how well camouflaged he is on that hide house. So cool. Um, the other thing you'll notice is there are two hide houses. We want somewhere for Groot to be able to go and feel sheltered and safe from anything else or noise, or just if he wants to kind of sleep in his house where he would, like in the wild. And the reason why there are two is because he is a reptile and he likes it really warm because in Asia where he comes from, it's really warm. I have an under the tank heating pad where you can put it on the side and we have um, that underneath. So he's got one house that's really warm and then this hide house is where there is no heating pad and that's where he can stay if he wants to cool down or stay cool. Like in the summer, if it's really hot. In the winter, he'd probably be more in the heating pad. The other thing you're gonna notice up top is this lamp. Woo, it's bright. This is called an active UV bulb. And what this bulb does is it replicates the same exact rays as the sun. Ah, oh, let's get some good suntan going here. Just kidding. But that is what Groot does. Because the desert is warm and has sun, it's important for him to have a few hours of the rays of the sun to help him produce certain vitamins within his body. Just like sun is important for us for vitamin D and other processes or things that happen in our body. So I recommend this and we shut it off um, at night and this is on during the day. All right. Now the next thing you'll see again is these hide houses. You can also use some plants. Um, I recommend fake plants. You can also put a few logs or branches, not up high, but low on the ground. What else do you think animals need to survive and stay happy? That's right, food and water. So you can simply use just a little dish, or I have this self-feeding water dish, which allows the water to fill in the bottom 
and then you, it fills in the top here and it kind of self feeds as he drinks it. Geckos don't drink a ton of water, so it just needs to be a shallow dish, um, but they lap it and lick it with that tongue. So that's another function that they use their tongue for. Now, as far as food, that's where the little difficult part comes. Leopard geckos do need live insects or food. As you saw, we feed him the mealworms. These are fairly cheap. You can get them at your local pet shops. Um, they come in packs of 50, 100, 500. They're all like under five or so dollars, very cheap. I do recommend keeping them in the fridge because these do go through metamorphosis and might change into beetles if you don't. So you can just stick them in your fridge next to your snacks. Just don't eat them. Um, or you can feed the leopard gecko crickets. And I don't have any crickets now, they're coming tomorrow, but you can either feed the crickets in the tank, which I don't do because then the crickets hide underneath the house if he's not hungry, or they might even bite the gecko while he's sleeping. So I take the gecko out. This is called a critter carrier. And what we do is we put the gecko in here with their crickets, and it's fun to watch. It's entertaining. We do this at school with all of the students, and you can put them in here and watch him eat his crickets. And I feed the leopard gecko twice a week um, or every two or three days. And if it was a younger gecko, you could feed it a little bit every day. And the crickets as well you can get at your local pet store. Now, there's a couple other things you're going to see in this cage. The first one is this little kind of red dish here. Pull it out. Um, this is what's called a little moss house. This is just a Tupperware with a little hole cut out of the, the front. Now, when that gecko gets ready to shed his skin, he needs a little bit of moisture or wetness and he can't really fit into the water dish. So this is a plant, moss is a plant, and we keep it nice and damp. What he does is he crawls in and sits on it and it helps moisturize or loosen his skin when he's ready to shed. It's kind of like when we put lotion all over our skin. So we make this little moss nest and we make sure it's nice and moist for him. The other thing you're going to see here is this little dish. And this is a little dish of white powder. And this white powder helps him with certain vitamins. And it actually is, this white powder is what we call calcium. Calcium is what makes our bones strong. It's why we drink milk. It's an important part of certain things we eat in our diet. And because Groot isn't eating all the normal things he would in the wild, we put this calcium powder in a dish and he licks it up and walks through it and eats it. If you don't want to put it in a dish, you can simply sprinkle it on your mealworms or your crickets before you feed him. But I like to leave it in there and then he just eats it when he needs. And the other important part of having a gecko is to make sure that you have a nice ventilated screen. He doesn't need any um, clips or things because they don't climb, so he's not going to open the top. But it is nice to have a secure screen top for your gecko. Now remember, they live 10 or 15 years, but that's pretty much the care of having a leopard gecko. So I'm just gonna move him back here. Move his cage back if I can. Orders in the way. Here we go. I'm gonna take him out again. One important thing with these hide houses is they can be heavy. When you pick up a leopard gecko, we pick up the leopard gecko by the center or the belly. We never, ever grab the gecko by the tail. Why not? Why not? What did we learn today? That's right. That tail could break off and snap, and then your mom and dad are going to go screaming, ah, running, and never want a leopard gecko again. But when you hold the leopard gecko, you grab by the center, then you always want to support the feet and the legs and make sure, of course, that we don't drop the gecko. It's good to practice sitting down or up over a table, but you want to make sure that they're safe and protected at all times. So that's an important part of having an animal too, is how to correctly hold and handle them. And that lizard has that fragile backbone and tail, so you want to be very gentle and kind, as I said, to all creatures.
leopard gecko being a reptile and some of the characteristics. We learned that they're lizards, and we learned about all the different body parts that help him to survive. And we also learned that leopard geckos can make pretty good pets. They are a big responsibility. And they can even save you a lot on your car insurance. Just kidding. If you've ever seen the commercial Geico Gecko, very funny. I know. Whew. I don't see kids a lot these days, so I'm always cracking jokes myself. But I would like to thank you all for coming to our Wild Wednesdays. If you have any questions or animals or things you want to recommend to me, you can reach me at my email from the flyer, which is pavlicek, spelled P-A-V-L-I-C-E-K, at bpsk12.org. So I hope you have a wild rest of your Wednesday, and I can't wait to see you next week, and I hope you had a great day meeting Groot the Leopard Gecko. Have a great afternoon, everyone. I miss you all, and be kind to all living things. Take care. Bye.